good evening, this is Hound Dog Steve coming to you on the 11th of April. And a warm welcome to all of you who are returning and a great shout out to any new visitors this evening. Please like, comment and subscribe below. It really does help when you click that big red button. And um, this evening we are going to have a quick update on the flooding in the Midwest of the US of A. And uh, right now there is a honking great blizzard that has settled in over basically the entire Midwest. Uh, now this is on top of uh, the flooding that they've just had which has been absolutely staggering. They haven't had any of the runoff yet from the highlands and the melting snow and so there is a lot more water to come. But this storm and I'll be showing you some pictures of the weather network but I mean they're expecting between one and three feet of snow depending on where you are. Now there is no way those fields are going to be dried out in time for planting. Um, I think the window is between middle of April and the middle of May. Uh, once you get beyond that, you're leaving yourself at risk of uh, frost damage in the fall because it just pushes that, uh, that growing um, uh, just a little bit too far. You know, you're looking basically 90 days. And so uh, the, the winter wheat has gone. Uh, there will be no corn or soya basically planted in the entire Midwest. I don't think they're going to make it this year. And of course, as we've seen, the grain that was damaged, these silos, uh, all of the corn and the soy that was stored in there basically swelled up when the water hit it and that has burst the whole silo open and the grain has spilled out into the water. So it's all contaminated. This represented 32% of America's stored grain. And so if you've lost 32% of your stored grain and you're looking at a terrible harvest this year, I mean, they're going to be basically dependent on the Carolinas and Tennessee uh, to fill, fulfill those needs. Anyway, let's take a quick look at these articles that I found and we'll come back and uh, we'll do a quick wrap up. Okie dokie, here we go. AccuWeather. I like the little warning at the top. Uh, powerhouse blizzard wreaks havoc on travel as intense storm brings wide range of wild weather to central US. Relentless spring snowstorm continues pummeling central US. Heavy snow and high winds continue to starve travel in the Rockies and north central United States as a major storm wallops the region through Thursday. The storm blasted parts of the west with heavy rain, heavy mountain snow, power cutting winds and blowing dust Tuesday into Wednesday night. The early stages of the storm knocked out power to 50,000 in the Los Angeles area and kicked up dramatic dust storms in Nevada. Thunder and lightning accompanied the intense snowfall and an icy mix in some areas on Wednesday, Wednesday night and Thursday morning. As the storm's reach expands across the country, a total of 200 million people in the United States will feel the impacts of this intense weather system that may be second only in strength to the bomb cyclone that hit much of the same area about a month ago. The National Weather Service said that this is a historic springtime snowstorm. Even the northwest will eventually receive some rain, thunderstorms and wind from the storm to the end of the week. And here it is. Temperatures in the 60s, 70s and 80s from early this week were quickly replaced with temperatures in the 20s, 30s and 40s. Denver hit 78 degrees Fahrenheit on Tuesday but dropped into the teens on Wednesday night as the snow continued to fall. Gusty winds will persist in the Denver area on Thursday now that the snow has ended. In the swath of the heavy snow, disruptions to travel, including flight cancellations and road closures, will continue to mount, AccuWeather senior meteorologist Dan Pydanowski said. While, Minne while Minneapolis may escape the brunt of the heavy snowfall to the northwest, the Twin City metro area can expect enough snow, ice, rain and wind to cause substantial disruptions to travel and daily activities. And here we are, the dark blue, 12 to 24 inches. And even the light, this is the light blue, this is the only little part. It's get, going to get 1 to 3 inches. But the vast majority is going to get 6 to 12 inches of snow out of this situation. A large swath of a foot of snow or more is forecast from the northern Rockies to the upper Midwest. Within this zone, from 1 to 2 feet of snow are forecast with an AccuWeather local storm max of 30 inches. 
most likely in South Dakota, western Nebraska and southwestern Minnesota. In some spots, South Dakota had already received 18 inches of snow. The snow will be heavy and wet in nature over portions of the plains and upper Midwest, which will make it difficult to remove from driveways and sidewalks. And uh, these are some of the pictures from Nebraska flooding taking place just a week ago. Look at it. Someone described this as an inland sea. Look at that. As far as the eye can see is just water. Road completely submerged. Uh, I can assure you, these fields are not going to be dry in time for planting. Look, this is a farm right here. Look at that. Unbelievable. There you go, kind of sums it all up, don't it? And here we are, look at that farm. Completely underwater. Here is your grain storage, right here. Uh, all of that grain now is contaminated. All contaminated. So this is what I have been predicting all along that climate change would look like on the ground for you and I. Uh, just a roller coaster of weather running from one extreme to the other. Uh, it is absolutely clear now that the jet stream has changed its pattern. Uh, certainly in my locality we are getting south and west winds just about constantly now. And that was a rarity at one time. Uh, three to five years ago you'd maybe get a couple of southwest winds uh, during the course of one year. Now it's almost constant and uh, that represents a significant change and it's always blowing there are very 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 few still days where there is no wind blowing at all and so the weather has changed dramatically and this is the worst kind of weather for farming and growing uh, this is why i'm glad that i put in hugel culture raised beds uh, if i have a wet year uh, that water just runs out the bottom it, it gets soaked up by the wood underneath the soil but the surplus it just runs out of the bottom of the raised bed and if it's dry then that water is saved up in the wood and the roots just go down and pick up the moisture from the wood it's a it's a perfect situation and of course i'm putting hoops over them so that i can turn them into little greenhouses if i want to and uh, protect them from other kinds of you know frost uh, hail possibly God forbid snow, uh, but that's what we're going to be seeing. You could actually see 70 degree days in January and you could see five days of frost in the middle of August. And you might never see that. That is how variable the weather is going to be and it is just, it's disgusting how the government really hasn't planned for any of this. I was talking to a friend the other day uh, about my red pill moment and that was around Y2K and uh, during the course of doing preparations because we thought all things electrical were basically going to fail uh, at midnight of the year 2000 uh, we found out that the government is prepared not even for minor issues if there was an ice storm here right now uh, all they would do is round you up in buses and take you to stadiums and that kind of stuff just like they did down in New Orleans uh, because they haven't made any real contingency plans and there'd be, there'd be no food or limited food and uh, you would be kept completely in the dark because the government's not prepared. So you have to be prepared to deal with these changing weather systems. You need to have a little food stored, you need to have a little garden put in and you need to learn some of these skills uh, how you can do sprouting for example for your greens if you really get stuck and you can't even get outside you can sprout in a jar uh, in your window and you get those greens that you need to give you those essential nutrients so uh, think about what you're seeing 
Don't believe these climate specialists, for goodness sake. Go talk to a gardener. Go talk to a farmer. A farmer will tell you what the hell is going on because they deal with it every single year. Same with me. I notice every little minor change in the weather because I plant on a schedule and I harvest on a schedule. And when there's a deviation to that, I notice it because I had to change my schedule. And so that rubs me the wrong way. And of course, I like to keep a record uh, year over year of what the planting season was like. So prepare yourself accordingly, my friends. Prepare yourself accordingly. It's going to get wild and wacky. Uh, if the intensification I've seen is coming, uh, what we're seeing right now, th this is just the opening volley. Okay, so if you've enjoyed this conversation, please comment, like, and subscribe below. And in the meantime, this is Hound Dog Steve signing off, wishing you a great weekend coming up, and we will talk very, very shortly. You take care now. See ya. Bye.